Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Miss Day. So I would like to talk to you about concentric circles, and this is an example that a student created. And you can see that concentric circles just means that it's a circle that has the same center. They share a center. So all of these circles share the same center. All right, now you can create your concentric circles by using um, a compass. Um, you could also just trace circular objects. Just make sure that you trace the largest object first so that you can always center the circles and keep them concentric. Um, I picked this up like at the dollar store. These are not very expensive. Um, you could probably get them at, at office supply and that way you can keep the circle concentric and you can draw any size you want just by changing this. All right, so let's look at some of the guidelines that we have for this assignment. So for concentric circles, um, I would like for you to draw a composition and I'd like for your composition to have three to seven uh, sets of concentric circles three to five divider lines, and we're going to draw three thumbnail sketches. And of course, a thumbnail sketch is just a small drawing, like maybe two to three inches, where you plan out uh, what you want to do. Um, after you draw the thumbnail sketch, you're going to also work out your color scheme and your techniques. Um, and then finally, step three is to draw out the design on the big paper. So let's Let's look at some possible um, designs. I, I've done some here on another sheet. Um, and what I like about doing thumbnails is that as you do more, you generate more and more ideas. So you can definitely do more than three. Um, three is just what I recommend um, as a minimum. Okay, so it's a sketch, so that does not have to be perfect, so you could draw it pretty quickly. Um, there's one set of circles. Here's another set. This will be my third set. Now remember, um, I'm asking you for 7 to 11. So if you're worried about it, we can count. So 1, 2, 3, 4 five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12, so that's definitely within the guidelines. The next thing um, that I require is three to five divider lines that go all the way across the design. Um, they do not have to be straight lines. They could be other shapes. Um, for example, um, you could draw kind of a splat, a uh, splatter uh, type shapes or um, drips. Um, this one has wavy lines. Um, this, this is actually one of mine and this one has the splatter and the drips. This one has some flower type shapes over the concentric circles. This one actually the concentric circles are really small and the focus is more on the divider lines themselves which are these large wavy lines. Uh, the divider lines in this case, actually, to break up the space, are these bubbles. And this one is, is very different. Still has the concentric circles, but it has these shapes interrupting, um, interrupting them. Oh, and this is one that I never finished. Okay. All right, so um, they do not have to be straight lines. They could be other shapes. Um, so I kind of like, I don't know, I'm thinking that I want maybe like a rectangle over here and maybe um, another one here. Um, and then maybe I'll do a skinnier one that's actually going off the page. So that's just another possibility. Um, and of course I'm jumping from this idea. 
So let's see, what else could I do? Of course, you don't ever want to do something right in the middle. That's too predictable. You want your art to be um, interesting. And so don't make your circles right in the middle. Always make them off to the side. Remember we talked about the rule of three. So if you divide your paper using a tic-tac-toe board, these tend to be the places that we find most interesting. Um, this happens to be my favorite. I always uh, kind of gravitate towards um, this area. So I'm going to do some here. And um, I'll do another one here. And then I think I'll do one down here. And, um, you know, try to make things go off the edge of the paper. It makes it more interesting. Um, so divider lines for this particular image. Um, really like the wavy line. I might come back to doing that, 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 that I really like these big waves. So remember three to five divider lines. So that would give me enough there. Um, and it was seven to 11 circles. So one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that puts me definitely in the requirements for that. Um, all right, let's try something else. Um, again, you know that this is my favorite spot. So I'm gonna put something here. And I just had an idea um, about doing maybe some, some wavy lines inside one of them. But that's, that's more of a design further on down the line. Okay, let's get our circles in. Um, I want to do one up here that's kind of coming off the page. And then I'll do one here and all right and so um, actually I think for this one I might try some boxes so I might try some rectangles. And All right, so I'm liking that. Okay, so once you have, um, you know, done thumbnail sketches, and that's when we need to come back to step number two. So see, we've done um, I wrote I wrote it down twice. Okay, once we've done our compositions and our thumbnail sketches, we're coming back to design and color, color scheme. All right, so I want you to think about your color scheme. I've I've already worked mine out. Of course, I have this really cool color wheel um, that I bought at the store, and um, what I'm going to use is a triad. I'm going to do red, violet, blue, green, and yellow, orange. And so you can see it's a triangle, so that's a triad. Of course, the most popular triad is red, blue, yellow, uh, primary. But um, that's what I'm gonna do. I've already found my colored pencils. I already tested them out. So I did several trying to figure out which colors I wanted exactly. And so this is where I found, okay, that's definitely my purple. This is definitely my blue. And this is definitely my yellow orange that I'm going to use. All right, so now we're down to techniques. So um, you should see a list of techniques um, in the assignment for colored pencils and for um, watercolor. So the colored pencil techniques, I made a note here of what they were because colored pencil is what I'm choosing to use. Um, if you choose to use the watercolor, go back and look to see what they were. So I know um, my color scheme, let's see, I said it was red-violet. 
um, blue green and yellow orange so that's going to be my color scheme my techniques I need to use gradation the color to black the color to white achromatic and then um, mark making um, so I think I'm going to do this last one so what I would need to do is decide you know what color is going to be where and then um, how I was going to create my uh, gradation so you can see this is a great example of how I've used the gradation the fading from uh, black to the color or the color out to white um, and the other well they, they all have examples of it but this one has an example of mark making so you can see how um, I let um, uh, these lines show through I didn't blend them all out to make it solid so um, and of course you can have areas that are just black and white okay so think about that and what happened to my little paper oh um, start working out what colors you want to go where and then think about those um, techniques so hmm yeah, I, this is one of my favorite colors, so I'm thinking I want it to go somewhere in here. So I would just put a little bit here. I uh, probably want to repeat it um, because your techniques, you're going to do, you're going to repeat them. So you're going to end up having um, at least three times uh, around your design. So I always do three. Because again, that makes it interesting. So that's some of the violet. Where am I going to put this blue? I definitely want some of it in the background. So you can see I'm not coloring the whole thing. I'm just kind of putting some color down to kind of get an idea of where um, where it is and what it's going to look like. And by the way, I, I've decided that inside the, the rectangles I'm just going to do black and white and then the color is going to exist outside of that. So that's, um, that was my executive decision there. So that means that this would be the yellow one. And this. Now that's not going to be able to be yellow. I'm going to need one more yellow out here because I don't want them to touch. Okay. So you can see I'm going around and I'm making sure that I have three and that they're balanced. So that's how you're going to work out your color scheme. Um, and when you're thinking about your techniques, you know, if you want to make some notes, like I just told you, the, um, the black and white, so the achromatic that I have to have, achromatic is going to be inside. So I'll put a note here achromatic um, so my fades my gradations I'll have to decide what what area I want to be dark and what area I want to be light uh, and do my fades inside my circles and then of course you know if I've nailed it down and I've decided yes this is the one that I really like this is the one I'm going to do then I'll need to transfer it to another piece of paper and draw lightly or with a 2H. I cannot wait to see you guys, your designs. I'm so excited. I love this project. Good luck, everybody.